What is going on guys? It's Adam AK Marf and today we're going to be talking about the increased potential for a nuclear conflict or at least that's what the Pentagon is saying. We'll be right back right after this. Remember, nothing in the show should be considered legal, medical, or financial advice. The views of the callers can differ considerably and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of myself, Dex, or anyone else on the show. You should always do your own research and consult with professionals. The internet is full of fake news, so please take everything with a grain of salt. With that being said, we actually back up almost everything we say on our website, marfuglenews.com, where you can actually find every single article, every single tweet, every single picture. Anything that we share here uh, is going to be there as a bibliography of sorts. So that way that you know uh, exactly where you are getting your information. My name is Adam. This is Marfugal News. So when you go to our website, you'll see uh, once you click on this, you'll have everything at your fingertips. You can either follow along on a second device or you can uh, watch on your TV and scroll through the articles on your phone, uh, whatever combo you want to go. And you can go back retrospectively and, and search through our website for any previous story. Uh, again, then there is also web-only content, the too hot for TV stuff at the bottom. Bottom. And then if you want to support us in any way or do a PayPal comment during the show, you can do so. All of the links are over on the right side, including EMP Shield, which their Mission America sale ends tonight. Uh, we actually just got confirmation. They just popped into the chat and let us know that. So uh, we actually didn't know when it was going to end. And thank you for uh, clarifying. Uh, I, th I believe it was Andrew that stopped in. So thank you, Andrew. I appreciate that. Uh, let's bring in my co-host slash internet brother, Dex. What is going on and how are you doing today? Well, hello, Adam, and hello, Fugle fam. I'm doing just fine. So we have a ton of stuff to go over. Uh, we'll go right into it. Uh, but first, I do want to remind you, if you are missing notifications, make sure to get ours. You, you can get direct uh, push notifications directly to your phone over at marfuglenews.com and you can sign up for our marfugle email alerts again we don't send out very many but when we do we feel they are very important so remember remember to uh, sign up for that all right and it says that jb says he will deliver a response directly to putin over a string of cyber attacks so who knows what this means it says president jb vowed wednesday morning that he will quote deliver a response to the recent string of cyber attacks against U.S. targets directly to Russian President uh, Vladimir Putin. It says, uh, Mr. B says, uh, fielding questions as he was leaving Washington, D.C. for a trip to Illinois, had just concluded an interagency meeting in the White House Situation Room on the administration's specific strategy for uh, countering these ransomware attacks. Which, again, they're basically saying that they believe it's the Russian government doing uh, then again, the Russian government is saying, hey, well, where's your proof? Can you put your proof public? It says before boarding a Marine One, of course, to the, the uh, presidential helicopter, the president ignored uh, the question on the subject. But when asked uh, what his message to Putin on cyber is, he simply responded, I will deliver it to him. That's kind of creepy, Dex. <laughs> uh, what is he going to deliver? Yeah, not a lot of substance there either. Um, you know, it's funny because he spent and his administration spent the last couple of days like hemming and hawing over whether or not it was really uh, Russia. And now he's saying he's going to deliver it to him. You know, and this is also coming on the heels of their meeting that they had uh, last month face to face in which he laid out the, you know, the, the targets not to hit. Like, please don't hit these locations. Right. This is off limits. And uh, I, if, I, I may be understanding this uh, incorrectly, but I believe a couple of those already got hit. Uh, so, again, if you uh, want to do some research on your own and let us know, uh, email me at adam at marfuglenews.com. Uh, I think that there's obviously a lot going on cyber-wise. This is why uh, we believe everybody should, you know, be prepared for anything right now, uh, especially cyber attacks. It says members of both parties criticized JB for hosting uh, his June summit with Putin in Geneva over concerns that agreeing to a meeting without securing commitments would only enable future malign activity from Russian actors. Yet the president assured the media at a post-summit press conference that Putin 
agreed to address the cyber attacks carried out by Russian actors. It says, quote, I've talked about the proposition that uh, certain critical infrastructure should be off limits to attack, uh, period, by cyber or any other means. The president stated at that time, he says, I gave them a list and I don't have in front of me, if I'm not mistaken, of six entities or 16 defined as critical infrastructure from the energy sector to our water systems. Why would you even need a knit, uh, a list for this? It's like, yeah, this makes no sense to me because it's like, it's like, OK, it's OK if you hit anything but these 16. Just don't hit these 16. Mm. So is, is it like giving permission? It's like, yeah, if you want to, you know go after a, a tech company that's fine but you know don't hit my water treatment plant well and even even if it's like the fact that he's saying hey don't hit water systems don't hit energy it's like that's kind of common sense why do you even need a list uh that i mean that clearly says like hey we're in a conflict it's almost like they're and this was at the geneva convention uh do you realize that i i was just watching save it, uh, saving private ryan for probably the 10th time last night um, it, you know, it was, it ended up being on. And if that movie comes on, I end up watching the whole damn thing. Um, and that movie, uh, of course goes over D day. And then it, it shows, uh, you know, weirdo Tom Hanks, basically trying to get to, uh, to, uh, weirdo. What's his face? Uh, private Ryan, who's played by, uh, whatever that guy's name, uh, the, the famous guy that, the dude from uh, I'm sa I'm trying to think of it not Ben Affleck but his his buddy that does the born uh, born identity. Anyways, they're trying to find him. In that movie, they talk about uh, the um, survival. Uh, I want to say it's the survival uh, policy or or soul survival soul survivor policy and the whole premise of that movie is that there's four or i'm sorry five brothers and four brothers are killed and then the last brother is alive somewhere and dropped uh you know parachuted into france somewhere and that their whole mission is to go get him back and i said this is kind of unrealistic you know why would they send eight guys and in the movie you know basically all eight of them to die, or, or seven out of eight die to get this one guy and i was looking into it and you know the soul survivor policy went into play after the five Sullivan brothers were all taken out in one uh, instance where the USS, I want to say Juno, was sunk in 1948 and it was actually enacted into law. So that's a real thing where if there's one brother out of many, they basically say, you know, you have the right to keep your bloodline going and it's a sole survivor thing. You can't take all of the brothers, especially when it's drafted or something like that. So I guess the point of, of how this comes into it, it's like, it's uh it's like this whole thing that goes into the these 16 critical infrastructure uh pieces here it's like this is common sense it's it's almost like we're already at a, a conflict here that that was put in uh, and uh, at the Geneva Convention they're doing this at the Geneva Convention basically saying that these are the rules of war it's it, it seems to me like we're already at uh, conflict with Russia. Now we're working out some of the uh, kind of you know smaller rules of of war. Uh, you, just like in the Geneva Convention, uh, or I'm sorry, one of the rules is that you aren't supposed to take out medics if they're clearly marked medics in conflict. Uh, if they're combat medics, you're not supposed to shoot them, or you're at least you know supposed to uh, let them do their thing on both sides. Uh, it's a it's a you know world war crime or whatever to take out a medic. Of course, does it happen? Yes, that's why they arm combat medics with you know it used to be with just a pistol to defend themselves and whoever they were caring for. So there's a lot of weird little things like this, but it's like it, it's almost like we are at conflict already, and now they're just working out the systems. They're talking about it. Yeah, it certainly is like symbolic that they're meeting in Gen that they met, I should say, in Geneva. Right? That's kind of right. You know. I, yeah. I, I don't know. There's lots of really crazy stuff going on. Tico and Taco, thank you so much for your support tonight early on in the show. And then Perfect Truth says, hi, Adam. Hello, Dex. And, of course, thanks to all the mods. Y'all, much appreciated. Best info on YouTube. Hi, fam, from Olympia, Washington. Well, thank you, Perfect Truth. I appreciate that. And then galt for prez thank you for subscribing. We just gained about 20 people during the show. Uh, so thank you, thank you, and thank you. Uh, Linda C. and Aunt Jenny, thank you for being some of the last ones out last night. I really appreciate your support. And then 
uh, thank your mods like Lisa Art Hall and of course all of the the rest of the gang uh, down there in the mod section. So let me get an M in the chat for the mods. Ship in Dubai explodes, causing an enormous blast. This is pretty funky. It says a ship anchored in Dubai exploded late Wednesday, causing an enormous blast that was felt across the city. According to officials and the Associated Press, the vessel, believed to be an oil tanker, was anchored in the Jebel Ali port in the United Arab Emirates uh, main commercial hub when a fire broke out, causing an explosion, and the Dubai media office wrote on Twitter. It says, Dubai civil defense teams are currently dealing with a fire caused by the explosion of a container on board a ship in Jabal Ali port. The office wrote, the fire is under control and there are no deaths or injuries as a result to the accident. Uh, again, I guess more so it was it's such a massive uh, blast that they were uh, kind of caught up off guard. Dex, Man, you- it sounds like to me what they're saying is, and it was they said it tw- two different ways, but it sounds to me like something exploded and then it caused a fire. It, not that there was a fire and then it caused something to explode, right? There's no telling what this could be. Like these can, you know, if it's a container on that ship, if it's a container ship, or it sounds more like it's an oil an oil ship, an oil tanker, so maybe it doesn't have as many containers. Well, uh, we're, we're, <clears throat> we we should watch this to make sure that, you know, yeah. because we've seen so many oil refineries uh, mysteriously blow up or have things happen to them. We've seen, uh, of course, the oil drilling platforms have had all sorts of weird things happen to them lately. So, you know, is this oil related? I don't know, but we're going to follow it and see that, you know, if anything comes out after this. Uh, It'll be interesting to see who owns it. Uh, who's who's tied in uh, hurt by losing it right exactly and, and and did something mysteriously happen that we can't explain from well up above with time will tell or at least ho- hopefully sometimes time will tell sometimes they just keep it under wraps for years and years re55 thank you for your support re you know better than anybody you can write a message there and then Vinny vengeance says sup marf hey how are you doing Vinny? and i appreciate you you uh, supporting the channel we are truly independent. We do not have a multi-channel network. Uh, so when you guys support, that is our backbone. So thank you. Mystery as a fleet of 10 UFOs spotted hovering near International Space Station on NASA live stream. Is this more propaganda? I don't know. But it says an eagle-eyed space watcher has spotted at least 10 small black objects hovering right below the International Space Station. And no, it's not uh, It's not Jeff Bezos and his brothers. It's uh, apparently UFOs. It says the conspiracy theorist believes... I like how they literally label him this. He might have some theories here, but why do they do that? They just make people... They do it every time, too. Every it's time. The conspiracy theorist. It, it associates anybody who talks about this stuff with crazy. I flip and hate that. And who wrote this, by the way? This is the sun. You know, it's like, why do you do that? They, this has been going on since CIA created that, that word in the beginning. It says the theorist believes that NASA live feed captured the UFOs forming up in a circle above the southern Atlantic Ocean. It says footage grabbed from the NASA live stream from the International Space Station shows the orb-like objects moving past the camera. Now, of course, this was sent in to our, uh, our awesome, uh, awesome guy over there at Mr. MBB333, and uh, he shared a screenshot. It says he posted the shocking discovery on YouTube saying this is a screen grab from the International Space Station above the South Atlantic. So uh, here is, uh, actually, we have two pieces here. So this is one of them. Check that out. What the hell is that? Obviously, uh, they almost look like missiles or satellites or what? Dex, what did you think about this? Well, they, they're they almost in formation or they're obviously all together. It seems like they're all together. They're all in equivalent frame, right? That's like, uh, they. oh, you know what? This one over here looks like the, uh, what? what is the ancient black satellite? What do they call that? The Black Knight? Or what is that? Can somebody can somebody correct me in chat? Dex, I, I know you probably don't know. Uh, somebody tell the ancient the the supposed ancient satellite that's been up there forever, and it's it's a, a black object. It is called the Black Knight. 
Okay, okay. It, it it almost looks like multiple Black Knight satellites. Does it not? Like that's it's kind of a trip. If you look off to the right here, it almost looks like that's one of those the vertical pictures. I'll, I'll show. I'll pull up a picture of <clears throat> uh, the Black Knight satellite, and then you'll you'll get a. Uh, you know what's going to happen? They're going to come out later and tell us it's Starlink, just like everything else, right? Of course. Yeah, and I actually people in chat were already saying they think that that's Starlink. Look at this. Those things are really small there. This Starlink. This is what they think is uh is the Black Knight satellite, right? These kind of uh images and illustrations have been popping up for years and years and years. Uh so it, it's just kind of funny cuz that does kind of look like I mean, look at this. That totally that looks like the grim reaper does it not that looks like the grim reaper with a laser gun that is <laughs> that is creepy up in the clouds uh so this again just to compare see this right here and then compare that to boom i don't know i, I just that was my observation there and uh yeah what do you think yeah it's, it's creepy what if uh more are coming there is a, a part of me that believes like a mua mua was the beginning of something. I don't think any of us know anything. And I, I really, you know, people give you crap no matter what you say. But I will say this. There are some uh, people out there that like to basically tell you stuff is fact or they believe that. I have had my opinion changed so many times uh, by seeing for myself, for uh, seeing results um, I don't believe I'm perfect. And what we do here is we try to take all of the puzzle pieces and put it together. We question everything. And when you do that, all of a sudden, this whole world opens up. When you stop just uh, taking things at face value and saying, okay, that's a headline, I believe that. And then it gets processed is that if you see a headline and go, okay, what's up here to every single headline, you start seeing a whole nother picture. And it's not like it's you're manufacturing another picture. You are actually seeing part of the real picture here. And many people are brainwashed. We know for a fact, this is what's crazy. We know for a fact that all governments around the world have been brainwashing uh, and doing projects and spending millions and millions of dollars to direct us to think how they want us to think. Social media and every other, uh, they've spent millions and millions of dollars to direct us on how to think. When you start questioning everyone, I think everyone should be questioned, including myself. Because if I report on something that I believe is true, and then I find out a week later that I was basing it on information that, you know, was bad, then I correct myself. But I think that everybody needs to look at all this stuff, and I I, I just always get um, crap when I say that I, I thought almost Oumuamua was some sort of uh, you know, that was, they named it Scout. What if that really was some sort of Scout? And then a second interstellar object comes in. The fact that uh, Oumuamua was such an odd shape, but th not only that, it ended up uh, speeding up as it left after it swoops by Earth. Even that same Harvard professor that said it might be a UFO, he said maybe they dropped off something. I thought that that was very intriguing. And I, I think that we should never, you know, close doors to everything. You know, everybody just closes doors and they, they don't want to hear it. I think people should really train themselves to be open-minded and to keep exploring and keep absorbing. So, really weird stuff. Now, uh, Dex, I'm going to have you uh, pop in here as well. Media and tech moguls appear on day one for the exclusive Sun Valley Billionaire Summer Camp. Now, we talked about this before, right, Dex? And th this is the gathering of all of these, uh, the super elites in the world. It's almost like uh, a different kind of Bilderberg group. Exactly. And, yeah, we talked about this maybe two weeks ago. We were talking about that it was coming up. And today was the first day. So now we're starting to see who's actually showing up. And the who's who list is pretty deep. 
when you think about the, you know, the power and the billions that uh, are controlled by the folks that are showing up here. Now, it says big names in the film, technology, design, and sports industries made their appearance at Sun Valley Rural Idaho Tuesday for the start of the annual Billionaire Summer Camp for tech and uh, m media moguls. It says the gathering thrown by investment bank Allen and Company brings together A-listers from the various industries each year, although the event was canceled in 2020 due to the CV. It says this year, the five day conference held at the edge of Idaho's Sawtooth National Forest in a tiny town of just 1500 is set to feature strict checks to ensure that it does not become a super spreader event. It says some of the year's sessions will be. I bet they're laughing once they get in the door, right? They're like beep, 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 beep. They get in the door, they close and get, are the cameras gone? <laughs> Those idiots. <laughs> Super spreader. Some of the year's sessions will be held outside in attempt to minimize risk. Among the major figures that have appeared so far include businessman and New England Patriots owner Robert Kraft, Netflix co-CEO uh, Reed Hastings, and Ted Sarandos, CBS News' Gail King, Nike CEO John Donahoe, Donahoe, uh, former Disney CEO Michael Eisner, Sherry Redstone, chairwoman of Viacom, huge. I mean, that's that's big. That's these are the big media moguls. Uh, apparently, whatever that is is coming. And then, of course, uh, there's this is a really interesting article because it shows everybody that is actually going. These just look like normal people, right? Oh, there's Gail. What's up, Gail? Hey. The View, right? These are the people that uh, brainwash the, the rest of humanity. So they, of course, get their, uh, their notes of what they have and, to do. And what's so interesting about this, in addition to all of these names, which uh, you know we can go through, is that there's no outside of the press people, like um, uh, the guy from CNN, um, and a couple other high profile, you know, uh, press people. There is no press allowed in here. It's not a press event. It's a secret meeting. It's a private meeting. It, there is no information other than what the people can see from outside of the event and at the local airport where most people were stacking up trying to identify the, uh, the rich moguls jets as they were coming in. Like, so um, the, the picture on Be screen Bezos, Jeff was there. Jet was there. Yep. So these are the, the these are the main people that are running our planet are all here. And this is a, a picture of their private jets. Right. Um, in fact, they show how some of the uh, farming elites got there as well. They actually rode in by cow. And uh, of course, Warren Buffett will be there. Mr. Bill. Mr. Bezos. Uh, Bezos' successor and current CEO will be there. See how this ties in? John Nallen, Chief Financial Officer and Senior Executive President of 21st Century Fox. Comcast. I mean, this is incredible. And so, again, people don't realize, why do you think that... Uh, a 4,000 news channels will say the exact same script. If you've ever seen the clips of uh, these smaller news, basically uh, all saying the same lines. Isn't this funny? I, we're actually getting some choppiness here. That That's weird. We're talking about this. Anyways, you, if you've ever seen the clips of how not like a similar sentence, but an entire paragraph read out by 4,000 local channels all around the country, and they're all reading off the same thing. It's because it all goes up to this, uh, it's kind of a pyramid. And it goes to the six family uh, families that run everything. And, and there's some interesting names here too. Like you wouldn't think have anything to do with media, but like Anne, and I won't say her last name, from 23andMe, you know who I'm talking about? She's there. Why? So again, there's some freaky stuff, but just be prepared for the next year because whatever is going on here is uh, 
is creepy to me. I mean, it, it, it's this is where they decide what will happen in the next year. Judging by the names, this is like, this is so crazy. I mean, this is like, this could be, wouldn't it be just nuts if, if eventually just video got out and this is just some big Moloch, you know, crazy uh, celebration of, of, you know, evil people. Can you imagine the security? I mean, um, bringing together this many, you know, high profile individuals into one location, one small location. Um, I could just imagine what they may have to deal with from a security point of view. What I don't understand is like, what is this? Look at this. What is that tattoo? Anybody want to see uh, if that means anything? That would be funny if, if we just happened to catch like some weird uh, tattoo that, that means something creepy. Almost looks like a sun or something. Well, what a crappy tattoo. Maybe... Maybe that was his first tattoo. Anyways, so that's going on. I would highly uh, just keep your eyes and ears peeled. Uh, before we talk about Iraq base hosting U.S. troops is under attack with at least three drones and 20 rockets, I do want to remind you the Mission America sale is about to end. In fact, uh, Andrew from EMP Shield just came in at the beginning uh, to let us know, uh, we actually said yesterday's show that we didn't know when it was going to end. Uh, we really didn't. So uh, Andrew just confirmed for us that the sale is going to end. Uh, it is an additional thirty dollars off on top of our grandfathered in fifty dollars off. So that is eighty dollars per device when you get multiples. Again, this is uh, I, I believe this is the best we've seen since Black Friday. It actually and, goes up if you get multiples. That's just for one. Yeah, so it's actually eighty dollars or more. Uh, when you get multiples. So again, uh, make sure to go check out marfuglenews.com slash EMP. This is the same uh, devices that, you know, these, these are the same company that is actually contracted with agencies like DHS, DOD, and of course the Demso team helping protect the Texas grid. It can actually protect you against all three phases of an EMP, E1, E2, and E3, and solar flares. Again, up to 228,000 amps. Not only that though, for normal people with normal houses in the Midwest that deal with a lot of lightning, it can actually protect your house against lightning. In fact, one of these devices is about a fifth of the deductible you would get if your house is struck and damaged by lightning. So, again, it's a smart decision. But, uh, again, you can also add this into your car by yourself. Uh, I put mine in my car in about six minutes. Uh, I think I timed it at like six and a half minutes. So again, that is the easiest one to do. You can get one for your car, your generator, of course, uh, your boat, your RV, your solar system. People don't think about that. Uh, even your ham radio, they make a device for. So again, marfuglenews.com slash EMP. This is your last chance to get in to the Mission America sale. Not only does this help our channel, but you get a giant discount as well. I think it's a win-win for everybody because it ends up helping us grow and it helps you save. So... All right, uh, and then we have uh, Iran base hosting U.S. troops is under attack with at least three drones and 20 rockets. Uh, an airport in Armenia is hosting U.S. troops was reportedly under attack with at least three drones and 20 rockets. Uh, mi militia affiliated channels say that at least 20 rockets hit the base at Herbal Airport in Armenia, according to the BBC correspondent. Uh, correspondent Nakafish Kanavard said that at least three drones and 20 rockets have been used in tonight's attack on both Herbal Airport and the U.S. consulate in Herbal, Kurdistan. It says the spokesman for the U.S. operation Inherent Resolve, uh, Colonel Wayne Murado, tweeted about the incident on Tuesday. Initial report about approximately 11.15 p.m. local time, one UAS or unmanned aircraft system impacted in the vicinity of Herbal Air Base, Iraq, the tweet said. At this time, initial reports indicate no injuries, casualties, or damage. We will update when we have further information. So, why this matters, of course, is because of the housed U.S. troops there. If we do end up hearing something about this, this is obviously something that was targeted or uh, meant to go out to the news. And, and the one thing I, I think about when I keep hearing about this is, you know, we talked the other day about the iCountry 
not necessarily pointing the finger yet or pointing fingers in their tit for tat with the is country, you know, going back and forth. It seems like maybe that part of what we see is a lot of them doing these things as their form of uh, retaliation because it seems like they have nothing else they can do but go in, you know, to the to their neighbor and, you know, do this kind of stuff to us, right? Yeah, now drones have changed a lot of things as far as these tit for tats go because they can do it remotely from ten up to ten miles, twenty miles away. Now, um, again, you know, just our consumer drones go ten miles. I can only imagine how far, uh, if not unlimited, some of these drones that are made by military for military purposes uh, can go. One thing that I almost want to ask uh, Andrew uh, from EMP Shield. Is uh, can they make uh, EMP drones? I'm sure this is something that could happen, like where a drone could go in and well, not even necessary EMP, but like any kind of electronic warfare drones. Yeah, they're they're called non non nuclear EMPs, and yeah, they have them. That would be uh, it. Would almost be cool to do a, a video on the science behind that. It's kind of crazy. Uh, Widowmaker Production says Jabal Ali is refueling port for U.S. Navy supply ships supporting operations in the Gulf. <clears throat> so you're saying that that uh, that that place right there that caught fire uh, possibly was uh, uh, obviously something bigger than just you know just an explosion. Uh, and then David Charbonneau, thank you for uh, subscribing. As always, if you subscribe during the show, you will get a shout out. And then Silly Gurgle says, glad to catch a live show. That tattoo looks like a power symbol. Oh, you're right. I didn't even, uh, that is actually pretty smart. Look at that. It does kind of look like a power symbol. Like a power button. If that isn't another uh, sign. I saw that there was a picture of Mr. Bill... Gates uh, actually showed him holding a stack of books and the only black book right in the middle said lights out. I thought that was creepy. Uh, Dex, actually, can you pull up that picture? There's a, a picture going around Twitter that has uh, Bill holding a stack of books and he, in the stack of books it says lights out. If you if you can find it, that would be awesome. If not, no worries. Um, I'm looking and then, of course, Haitian president. This is, this is how you know there are way more things going on uh, behind the scenes uh, than you think. It says Haitian president Jovenel Mousseau assassinated in his own home. So this guy was taken out. He was, of course, the Haitian president, which we've talked about Haiti just recently. And, of course, uh, Haiti has been in the news for a while now because of certain foundations and things that, uh, of course, never actually went to Haiti. Uh, and then Haiti President Jovenel Mousseau has been taken out in his own home on Wednesday. Interim Prime Minister Claude Joseph is announced. Now, it says that Moise is, uh, and I, if I'm pronouncing this, if somebody wants to put how it's pr uh, correctly pronounced in the chat, that would help. Uh, Moise uh, it was killed about 1 a.m. local time by a group of assailants, uh, Joseph said in a statement. The first lady was, lady was injured in the attack, the statement said. The attackers were described as Spanish-speaking. Huh. That's not on purpose, right? And then, of course, we have... U.S. could send troops into Haiti to prevent a civil war after bloody nation of President Jovenel Mousseau. It says the U.S. could send troops into Haiti after this, uh, this guy was taken out. It is feared that the Caribbean nation could be plunged into chaos after the killing which has shocked the world. And experts have already raised the prospect of Western intervention. It says that... Uh, Professor Robert Fatten, who has written several books on Haiti's turbulent history, grimly said that the situation is likely to degenerate and the country could be plunged into chaos. Uh, he said that another, uh, there could be another military in intervention as previously been seen in the last few decades from France and from the U.S. with the backing of the United Nations. It says President Moise uh, was gunned down last night by a group of suspected mercenaries who were reported to have been posing as agents from 
the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration. So they were claiming to be DEA. These guys were saying they were DEA. Yeah, reports in the street were coming from people where they were telling them, go back in, everything's fine, we're DEA, be quiet, get out of the way, we're DEA. Wow. End times, thank you so much for uh, coming over to, to YouTube. You never come over there. Thank you, says, sometimes peeps need hugs. Hugs cure the CV. Don't tell anyone. I believe that. Lisa and Marie, that, what the was that? VG photo is available. Oh, in, thank you so next. much. Yeah. Lisa Marie S. says, tried calling again. I haven't gotten a push notification for the Marfugel show site yet, but I'll keep trying. So Lisa Marie, well, we'll have to put something informational about that on Twitter because the push notification uh, does not work with some browsers. So we'll have to we'll have to make sure to put that in there. Temperance R Awakened tar Tarkology says, as far as I know, that tattoo means the chosen one, the sun over the sun. Get it? LOL. The chosen ones, the sun over the sun. So Temperance R Awakened Tarkaology says that this tattoo that this guy has means the chosen ones. If, if that's true, again, can't we can't confirm that. That's that is creepy. Okay, that is like incredibly creepy. What if all of them have it, but they're it's all hidden? That's creepy. Uh, Widowmaker Production says. Jab oh, okay, I got that one. And then uh, Stephen McMahon, I forgot you. It says, how are the little ones, Adie, uh, at the moment? It says, by the way, didn't you start broadcasting from a cafeteria? Oh, and I'm not a cat. Mm, I don't know. Uh, haven't been in a cafeteria. So Sherry Parker Crager, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And Leadfoot Lou, thank you for subscribing. Live Free, thank you for subscribing as well. And everyone else that has popped in already, I appreciate you. 4,000 people here. So yes, what you're looking at, I, I just noticed we had 400 people pop in. So uh, that is the tattoo of one of the uh, attendees at this, uh, this gathering of essentially almost every elite social media mogul. It's basically a billionaire summer camp. You've got pretty much every big name there possible. Uh, the Bezos, the Jack, the Twitters, the, uh, of course, the Gates. Uh, you've got uh, Virgin Atlantic. You've got uh, all of the richest people in the world. Uh, Disney CEO, Netflix CEO, uh, pretty much any influential person, including uh, Gail King from The View, like that whole, uh, you know, narrative side that is essential to, you know, drilling into your brain uh, narratives, you know, all of those people. So that tattoo, very creepy. Let us know what it means. Yeah, so for them to go in there as DEA, that's, or at least pose as DEA, that's already sets off flags. And then they were Spanish speaking. So like, just weirdness all around. Is this a Fantastic Freddy? I don't know. Uh, but let's get into it. Pentagon warns of an increased potential for nuclear conflict in a newly disclosed manual. So let me uh, show this picture here real quick. This is the Gates picture I, I, was, I saw on Twitter. I thought that this was very creepy. A sign... Let's see if we uh, can pop this over this one then. It says, here are some book recommendations on what happens when people come into conflict with the world around them, courtesy of Gates, and then check it out. Lights out. Uh, Dex, isn't Lights Out, isn't that the book wrote by Ted Koppel? That's straight up the book about the... Yeah, about power going out, EMP kind of stuff, yeah. It was a, one of the first books about it, then mainstream. That is, okay. So...
And this is the context is he's saying that everyone needs to read this stack of books and it shows you the titles. Okay, that is the that that is exactly why this is more confirmation. Look at this. Lights Out is a book by Ted Koppel talking about how he he actually put together all the stats years and years ago, basically saying that that uh, this is a very likely scenario and that everybody needs to be prepared for it. How can that be right in front of us? I mean, like, it's just like, it's a joke. All right. And then let's see here. Pentagon warns of an increased potential for nuclear conflict in newly disclosed manual. It says, let me close this here. It says the risk of regional conflicts between nuclear armed nations is rising, according to the document prepared for the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Uh, we, of course, have shown you the reports that we got uh, from uh, the EMP task force by Peter Pry. Uh, that has shown a lot of it, they basically there. There's a lot of information that's out there available to people, and people are not paying attention. It says a U.S. military manual that only recently became public says that the world now faces a higher probability of conflicts involving nuclear weapons, and the document points to multiple nuclear weapons uh, systems and policies being pursued by adversaries and potential adversaries uh, as signs as the world is moving away from de-escalation and is instead moving closer to the reality of a nuclear exchange. While the document avoids placing any weight on United States policy and helping increase the likelihood of nuclear conflict, it does note that, quote, the flexible nuclear weapons the U.S. has pursued could be used to defend America and its interests in the event of a regional conflict involving nuclear arms. A copy of the manual titled Joint Publication 372, Joint Nuclear Operations, was obtained by the Federation of American Scientists, aka the FAS, last week through the Freedom of Information Act and posted online yesterday. This is the other joint publications that are meant to outline U.S. military-wide doctrine and are put through the office of the chairman, Joint Chiefs of Staff. This latest iteration of this particular manual, published in April 2020, says it was created to help establish joint doctrine to govern the activities and performance of the armed forces of the United States in joint operations and provide, quote, military guidance for the exercise of authority by combatant commanders and other joint force commanders in addition it offers advice for military interaction with governmental and non-governmental agencies multinational forces and other inner organizational partners this is this uh entire all the multi-page report here there is a lot we could almost do a video on this the publication basically asserts that these potential adversaries have moved decidedly in the opposite direction of de-escalation. So we're looking at, they're showing us in every every last way uh, that things are going in a, a, in a bad way, right? People are... Right, and we just reported, like, what was it, 100 new silos being installed in China, that's right? That's right. They want to be number one, the heavenly mandate. They're... China is going to be the biggest nuclear power and I'm not you know not saying that's a good thing I'm saying again it's going to be a fact because they're mass producing these things they're uh, now going to try to overtake us in that department as well at least in numbers I think part of their thing is that they are going to add numbers and numbers and numbers to everything else people get mad when you say that they're uh, be they're even strong at all because a lot of people say oh China made in China that kind of stuff you can't say you never underestimate your enemy ever I don't understand why people do uh, they also said they were the th number three uh, Navy just five years ago now they're the number one largest Navy in the world by a hundred ships they're mass producing like no one has ever seen before their entire country is an expert in mass production Mostly of crappy items, but if you've ever gotten a knockoff item of something lately, 
they have improved all of their all of the ways they do things because as technology went up they kept all of their labor cheap but their machinery got to the point where they were mass producing things and then the human aspect of it that they needed to keep that you know to keep their prices cheap that was still there they can now have uh, extremely high quality things made in china in fact most of the things you don't even know are made in china are made in china that's why I like stuff that actually says made in the USA because there is so little made in the USA now. You know this. So if you want to see this whole report, it is going to be available on the website marfuglenews.com. It says the publication claims that these nations have developed new types of nuclear weapons and have placed increased strategic importance on their nuclear weapons. So they're basically, they're putting all of their ducks in this basket and have all engaged in increasingly aggressive behavior. The manual then lists specific technologies and policies being pursued by these nations and uh, which it claims are leading to increased potential for nuclear conflict to occur. Dex is the, uh, oh, the oh actually uh, let me read this part. China has developed a new road mobile strategic intercontinental missile, a new multi warhead version of its DF five silo based ICBM, and its most advanced ballistic missile submarine armed with the new submarine launched ballistic missiles or SLBMs. It has also announced the development of a new nuclear capable strategic boomer, giving China a nuclear triad that was always our strength yeah that's a big that's a big step for them right? that's huge on the road in the water or by silo that's a triad we never wanted to see it says in the past few years which we showed you with the EMP task force report NK has dramatically increased its missile flight testing now, remember, as we went more over it, remember when everybody was saying that NK was a failure, all of those launches that were very low kilo, low yield, and they said, oh, they could barely get a big boom out of this thing. That's because they were specifically going for low yield. They got the, the actual blueprints transferred from Russia or, or acquired from Russia. Again, even Russia said, oh, well, our plans for a super EMP may have leaked, or may have been transferred to NK. And then all of a sudden, starting back in like, I think, believe 2006 is when, when it said, they started testing low yield explosions. And we thought, oh, this is so small, that could barely, that couldn't even take out a city block, right? Of course, even their, uh, even those low yield ones, that was a bigger than city block. But the point is, everybody goes, oh, they failed. You know, we're not afraid of that. But that same low yield explosion can knock out our power grid across the country. So people are people are not thinking straight. Let's see here. Yeah, there's there's a lot here to 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 go o through. So hold on one second. Let me pull this aside. Uh, Priscilla R., thank you. Susan loves Huskies. I appreciate you, each and every one of you that are uh, in the chat right now. I'm going to pop this open so I can see everybody. Let me see. Do you feel like I miss Kelly2334, thank you, and, and it's nice to see you tonight. Vault1111, 100% uh, Mo, thank you for being there. Vault, thanks for gifting out badges to everybody. Appreciate that. I hope you enjoyed that that host last night. Everybody said that they had fun. Uh, let's see here. Black Labs, what's going on? Uh, Truth Wins, we've got Bear Claws, Kits, 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 Gat. Uh, we've got Lisa K23 says, Symbol, Sigils, Ancient Fallen Angel Language. Dude, whatever that tattoo means, it's definitely symbolic. Uh, we've got O Firefighter. Thank you for being there. Lisa K just gifted them a badge. Uh, now you're part of the Mafia crew. And then, of course, Bug Out 45, Jenny Texas, uh, Scooby Doo Do Right, Hoppinson. What is going on? And uh, let's see here. Hoppinson. Uh, let's see here. Zippy Moons, Gem Gem. Uh, Mutant Fat Cat, I love that name. Pichu1093, nice to see you here once again. 
And, uh, of course, Vault 111, thank you for the multiple diamonds there. Uh, Kelly 2334, same thing. New EpiPen Island, says Black Labs. Uh, very well could be, right? And then Ant Ant Antoine and Nets 13 says, Love you, Adam Dex, Mods, and Fugle fam. Hanging with my mag family. Everyone needs a mag with two-day times. Well, thank you, thank you, and thank you, Antoinette, uh, th for the Ninja Gini over on, on uh, DLive. Earth Observer says, question everything. That's absolutely right. And then Black Labs, uh, thank you for the Ninja Gini as well. Batman with his jetpack, LOL. That is awesome. Thank you, guys, and thank you for supporting Independent. Kishara says, CIA patent LCD puts brain in trance programming. I'd love for you to email me something on that. Uh, Dex, we've got Russian fighter jets now scrambled to intercept us. I mean, that's kind of, that's not the usual. We're usually uh, reading the opposite. Yeah, we're always running them off. Now they're running us off. And and it, and it seems to be happening in the same location, uh, in that same general area. So it looks like we're using this um, disputed area. Uh, as a means of poking the bear, right? I guess. It says that the they intercepted a U.S. spy plane over the Black Sea weeks after the standoff with British warship. Uh, let's go over here. It says that Russia deployed fighter jets. Let me fix this real quick. I don't know why this started. Here, hold on. Russia deployed fighter jets after a U.S. spy plane was spotted over the Black Sea. This is going to bug me if I don't fix this. There we go. Why has it been like that? All right. And then let me see where this is. Sorry, guys. My OCD is kicking in here. Okay. So now we go over here. So now I need to move this. Look at that. Is that, you guys are like, why didn't you do that before? Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. There we go. This comes two weeks after a major international incident with Russian warp reportedly dropped the booms on the route of the British destroyer HMS Defender off the chi uh, coast of Crimea. So, wait a second. I saw them shoot thing off of a ship. I actually forgot that they said... They supposedly said that they dropped stuff from a plane, but I swear that video showed them shooting three things off of the... They did both. The, the, Russia says they did both, and the picture, the video shows the, um, the planes in the sky, but doesn't show them dropping anything, and it shows the shots over the bow, so to speak, even though they really weren't over the bow. That's weird. Uh, okay, so I thought there was a total of three... I saw at least three on that video from it went pop, pop, pop. It looked like a mortar, like a, almost like 4th of July, you know, mortar. It looked like a, a an angle shot looking out the window at this uh, smaller cannon. And then it launched and it went whoops, whoops, whoops. So I, I, I realized that now there's two different stories there. So-called warning shots were also fired from an FSB coastal patrol vessel. So that's where they say both. In the latest incident, Russia claims two Su-30 fighters prevented a Boeing P-8 Poseidon anti-submarine patrol aircraft of the U.S. Navy from entering its airspace. A video was released showing an aerial standoff, but the precise location was not divulged. On the evening of July 6, Russian airspace control devices over the neutral waters of the Black Sea detected an air target approaching the state border of the Russian Federation. So, Dex, l let me ask you this. So, uh, they've separated their internet. They've separated a few things. Like, now, you can actually... Um, you used to be able to put yourself in uh, Russia when you used something like NordVPN. You could put yourself there. Now you can't use that server. Uh, one of our Fu uh, Fugle family members actually noticed that. Right now, so far, there's travel open to places like China and, of course, Russia. It's like the one question that a lot of people ask is they're like, well, how could we be at bad terms? How are these not our allies? These are technically our, our kind of nemesis and, and not our allies, our enemies. And how do we still keep travel open so people can go to Russia, Russians can come here? 
wouldn't it be a sign? I, I guess. Would well, we... it's it's not really easy. Let's put it that way. You can't just pack up your bags and come to America from Russia. You've got to apply for a visa. But at the same time, there what about are a lot vacation? of Americans. What about in vacation? Russia and a lot of Russians in America, right? Yeah, but what about vacation? Can Russians come here for vacation for a couple of days? If they apply for a vacation visa and get it approved. So do you have to do how? Because uh, I haven't traveled too many places certain, besides Mexico. Certain and Canada. countries we like, you know, the UK. It's really simple. But coming from America, you know, we have uh, you know rules with them that are really open for Americans. So you can go into the UK as long as you don't stay longer than I think it's thirty days or something, right? But going to other countries, it depends on the country's rule and and really what they how they you know, reciprocate or how they treat the country you're coming from. So if it's one of our adversaries, that's not just just hop on a plane and decide to go to China tomorrow because you want to, you know, uh, have uh, breakfast in Beijing, right? So you have to apply, you have to get approval to go in there, et cetera. And America is pretty strong when it, when it means, you know, from our non-allies uh, about how it, what it takes to get into our country, with the exception of <laughs> if you want to come in on foot. Apparently, that's that's pretty simple. But <laughs> going, going through the their traditional visa approach, it's it's not always easy, especially if you have a background. I mean, that's part of what they do is they look at your background. Well, I I just wonder if if we're going to see a point where all of a sudden there is zero travel. We saw, you know, we of course saw where they closed down international travel for CV. But I guess I'm waiting for the day where they say, nope, no, nope, we're not letting people from the U.S. in or we're not letting Russians in, period. Any of them. No family members, nobody, even if there's somebody living here and having family members, uh, or China. I think, wouldn't that be kind of the ultimate kicker? Like, hey, we're about to go to conflict? Or do you think it will happen by surprise and then that will happen? Yeah, it, it's it's tough. It's hard to predict on something like that. You know, when we've seen we've seen scenarios where they, you know, will tell people in, you know, one of the I countries, hey, Americans leave or hey, you know, Russians leave or whatever, because they feel like things are getting heated. Right. Those things have happened before. We've seen that in the smaller countries. But I don't know if they would just give that away at, at a, a large scale um type event between Wait, either side right so and again we've we've ta uh, we've actually covered this where they put out alerts in fact uh, our government has put out alerts to different people in russia saying hey come home russia has uh, about last year we had this time where tensions got really high that's why so many people are like oh it's all going to be good is because we've had these roller coaster rides where we get close uh, back when Russia had 40,000 of their Ro Moscow um, citizens go down and do a bunker drill, they actually had 40,000 people all go down into their shelters and did a, a citywide drill. They had full-on people in, in nuclear uh, nuclear capable kind of suits, you know, hazmat suits and everything. They did the full nine yards. At that same time, right around there, there was a tit for tat where they were uh, kicking out diplomats, but they also told their Russian students and, and uh, Russian citizens to come home. I'm waiting to see that. You know, if we see that again, I think with everything else that's going on, this will be the kind of the peak. So keep your eye out for that. Keep your eye out for, for the Russian government saying, hey, come home, or the Chinese government saying, hey, get your students back here at that point there was no cv this was before cv and they were saying like it doesn't matter if you're in school if you're mid school year they said come back so that was kind of a sign you know it told us then that something was bad now it's gone two years past that there's been this whole cv thing that happened of course secretly people know what's really going on secretly these leaders know who did what Secretly, these leaders know, you know, where it was created, everything. So something is working right now. And it's, I think we're stepping on eggshells globally. Uh, Ron Woods, thank you for subscribing. I appreciate you. Welcome to the Fugle fam. I appreciate each and every one of you. Don S, enough is enough. Thank you for subscribing. Tons of new subscribers. I, um, thank you and, and uh, bless you for hitting that button. If you can, as well, hit that like button. I don't know if it works. I don't know if it helps. Uh, but we have noticed that comments do. So if you can, leave a comment. Say hi. Uh, tell me your favorite color. 
or tell me what you think about today's show. Uh, Rapid Red, thank you for subscribing. I love how you spelled that. Rebel 75, 70, uh, 74, 75, thank you for subscribing. Eric Keenan, Hard Styles, uh, Mia Romi, uh, and Gorilla Press, thank you, thank you, and thank you for subscribing. Uh, the crews of the Russian fighters identified the air target as a Boeing 8 P-8 Poseidon and escorted over the Black Sea. So this P-8 Poseidon, we've seen around some really creepy things that happened. Oh, the Beirut explosion. Uh, that had some pretty uh, funky stuff happen the day before something happened. So I'll have my eyes and ears peeled for everything for the next couple days. Uh, you know, for especially explosions. Let's let's look for the next 24 hours to 48 hours for uh, very odd explosions in that area. Thank you. All right, uh, moving on. If you have not already, make sure to go check out NordVPN. NordVPN can actually protect you. We've talked a lot about hacking and cyber crimes and everything else. Identity theft is a really big one. Um, in fact, totally on the side, uh, NordVPN, go to marfuglenews.com slash VPN. It helps our channel. It gives you a giant discount. Uh, this is a virtual private network that protects you. Totally on a side note, besides Nord, uh, one of my viewers just said uh, that somebody was trying to access their Instagram and sent them an email. I wanted to warn you. And I almost want to do like a how-to it is a big scam that's going on right now. You need to be careful. On top of this, Jacob Israel, a creator uh, that uh, we know very well. He's a Fugle fam. Uh, good, he's one of our good friends. He's one of my good friends. He's a great man on and off camera. He's got a big, huge channel, almost 200,000 subscribers. Um, he just had somebody use his name and his, his likeness to try to ask money for charity, but it wasn't. I don't know the full story, but that was his last video, and I was kind of surprised by that. But also, this uh, this person had their they got an email saying, "Hey, somebody has accessed from blah blah blah." I got the same one. It says uh, somebody accessed from Pakistan, and right when you see that, you go, "Oh no, 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 that was not me. I'm not in Pakistan. I don't know nobody in Pakistan." Click, click, click. It's not actually from Instagram. If you go to security, then settings, or I'm sorry, settings, the three dots, go to security, and then there's a tab that says emails from Instagram. It shows you every safety email. So if they do say, see a, a suspicious thing, the email will be in there. It will say, we sent you this email. If it's not, that's a 100% extremely accurate looking uh, phishing scam. What it does is it brings you to a page. You're looking at the website and you're going, no, it's, it's secure. It says Instagram.com. It says everything. But what it is, is they are grabbing and making you put in your password. Because guess what? 99% of people use the same password for everything. So then they got it for Instagram. They don't really care about your pictures and your photos. They care about your bank account. They care about all of your other financial stuff that you have. And with using the information they get from the inside of your Instagram, they can then pick, cut and paste that into your bank account. Use try uh, that same password or try it on, a, of course, your credit card websites or whatever it may be. So just that's a personal note. I've seen a couple people uh, that have been scammed. I, see, I, I saw a comment uh, saying that somebody didn't trust Bitcoin because Bitcoin sent them an email. Again, she, bless her heart, she didn't know said that Bitcoin sent her an email and that for fifth, you know, for $6 or something that they would uh, keep her something safe or something. And she goes, well, they ripped me off. It ended up being $60 per month and uh, they keep charging me. Everybody in the comments said, this isn't Bitcoin. Bitcoin isn't even a company. It doesn't have a base. It doesn't have a headquarters. It's nothing. But people f uh, fall for these because they are uh, extremely well worded. You guys need to do your own research on this stuff. And I, now this is beyond like the NordVPN. This is me like I'm I'm hoping that uh, some of the people that aren't as tech savvy, please be careful with everything you do. Well, the simple rule of thumb I try to tell people is never click a link in your email if it's related to an account. Like if your bank emails you, great. Go to your bank and log in by yourself without clicking on that link and see what it is they needed to talk to you about. Because if it's really important, it would be there 
right? And Or if you need to know it, you'll be able to see it, right? But don't exactly. trust an email because it can be forged so easily. And uh, Dex, so when they show you a website that looks totally legit, how do they do that? Well, a lot of times it's the in the domain name and they'll use a long subdomain and they'll make it look like, you know, this is if you're really smart enough to look at the URL. But most people don't even look at the URL. They just look at the web page. So they just copy the look and feel of the web page, whether it's your bank or your Instagram account, and they ask for username and password. It says, hey, log in so we can tell you what's going on in your account. You know, the one I got just the other day, I get these all the time, is, oh, your Amazon purchase for XYZ of a large dollar amount has gone through. And I'm like, well, I didn't order that. But then I look at it and I go, yeah, this is just a scam. But I'd never click on a link in an email, never. Except, and, you know, I'll click on a link for an ad or for – you know, a newsletter or things that are, you know, harmless, but never anything that requires me to log in. Right. Oh, and then um, how did they, so this Instagram one that it happened to me, it actually brings you to, I thought it was legit even myself. I click on it and it brings me to a legit password change. It basically sends you a password change thing. How are they doing that? It's an actual password change thing. And that's how they get your stuff. Are, are they? Well, they just build an app to do it and they fake it. That's unbelievable. So remember, you can go into Instagram or a almost any of them, uh, any of the social media platforms they have uh, emails from. Make sure to do it. Make sure to check that before you respond. I was smart enough. I almost changed my password too. I almost typed it and then I go, wait a second. And then I went and checked that tab and sure enough, there was no email in the last ever. So anyways yeah and if you want to be really secure you should go to any of your important accounts and look for something called two-factor authentication or secondary form of authentication and set that up whether it's a text message or using an authenticator app where it gives you a code because even if somebody does get your password because you fell for it and you typed it in they won't have that code because that code is something that you have or they won't presumably have your cell phone to get the text message because that's something you physically have so that's a good way to prevent that is to make sure you set that up when you see it. Exactly. Uh, and then uh, thank you. Billy Leather says, love you all. FFFFFF, Fugle fan forever. Been a fan from the start of your shows. Super informative. Prepper also. My nickname is Granny Gaga. I love it. Uh, gauge containing radioactive material stolen from engineering work truck in Sacramento. What? It says that thieves got more than what they bargained for, and now federal agents are on alert. Car break-ins are not new at the Oak Ridge Apartments on College Oaks Drive in Sacramento, but again, this one was different. It says one gentleman had his back window smashed out of his van, said apartment resident Steve Shipley. Uh, my wife's car actually got broken into before, said Diego Juarez, an apartment resident. But it says last weekend, a thief took off with something so dangerous that it has triggered a homeland security alert. The stolen device is called a nuclear gauge, and it contains radioactive amounts of cesium-137. If misused or tampered with, this cesium could cause serious injuries or death. The sheriff's department responded to investigate the burglary and notified their bomb squad and the FBI about the crime. That is a concern, said Shipley. Well, it's sad, but in this neighborhood, it's not surprising, said Gene Brooks. Uh, by the way, it, it's every neighborhood now. Uh, yeah, every neighborhood now. The nuclear gauge is used at construction sites where it shoots a beam of gamma rays into the soil to measure the density and moisture content. Engineers say it poses no risk if left alone, but now people who live in the area are worried about it being exposed to harmful radiation if it is misused. There are a lot of kids that play around here, so for something like that to be out there, that's kind of dangerous, said Juarez. Uh, what a weird uh, construction tool. Do you have to have a license to use it? I wonder, like, is this something, uh, maybe if, if somebody knows in the chat or if, if someone has ever used it, I'm sure we've got some construction foremans and others that have used this thing. Uh, could you point it at somebody and hurt them? Or what, you know, am I not understanding this thing? Uh, just return it and no charges, LOL. That's That's funny, yeah, yeah. Uh, but you will have uh, third degree burns on your uh, on your pocket, though. I, I say Mary Lupa Cholo says Fuka Shimi, Fuka Shimi. 
Fukushima. Uh, let's see here. The, the kids don't need a license. Marfu's Gold. What's going on? I love... I Thank you guys for representing the Marfugel family outside of here. You go in other chats as the Marfugel names. That, uh, literally, you guys are in a different category. Thank you so much for representing. Adam Manning. Uh, yo, break, yo, buy, or burn. Uh, Raquel R says, scary. Yeah, that is scary. Uh, most definitely. They made stealing unpublishable. That's what they get. Uh, only counting blue cars. Patrick, uh, that was Annette LePau. Bear Claws, your pocket. You die of radiation poisoning, says Shelby Cobra. Ooh, that is that is really bad. Tornado touched down at Naval Submarine Base Kings Bay, Georgia. Just Bear. Hey, Dex, do you, can you ch uh, check on that? Uh, yeah, I think there was some tornadoes that hit from uh probably spun off from the tropical storm is that anywhere in, near in florida uh, is that anywhere near close to you kings bay no that would be south it'd be way south I'll, I'll i'll look and see what what's going on okay thank you um yeah that's that's pretty freaky double sec thank you for subscribing an open-minded ministry or open truth ministry says what are those who call evil good and good evil who put darkness for light and light for darkness who put bitter and sweet and sweet for bitter? Uh, we we have some really awesome people that have popped in. Dave, Stealth Bomber, could elite off-world plan be prepped for nuclear war? I don't know. Stealth Bomber, that would make sense. I mean, or I mean, it would make more sense than, than some of the other options. Uh, looks like an upside-down light bulb that could mean broken light bulb, which symbolizes transition into something better. Matt Francis, I like that you're positive thinking about it. Let's see here. And then we have Neuralink. Could Elon Musk's brain chip implant create superhumans? I don't even think you need to read an article for this one, of course. Neuralink is one of the trending topics under the umbrella of Elon Musk's collective conglomerates. The company plans to roll out the chip as fast as it can, and there's nothing that can stop the brain chip project. As it is being developed at the moment, with the said, many questions arise along the growing anticipation of the brain chip's launch. So can Neuralink create superhumans in the future? <clears throat> of course it can. Because if it, says, <clears throat> if it does what it says it's going to do, yes. It says merging AI technology with a biological functioning brain is quite suspicious. But using AI to assist the brain is possible. Elon Musk has already demonstrated the potential of AI assistance while proving hecklers wrong through a series of live harmless experiments that are currently available online among the observations include a demon uh the demon of Neuralink implants to pigs including the demon of Neuralink implants to pigs oh demonstration okay they just forgot to finish their word or or the, you know what i see more than ever now I actually see, see, this is Science Times. They're supposed to be a respected, uh, they just do spell check or they're writing these articles on their phones and they don't have somebody edit them. Like even our uh, more, you know, elitist kind of magazines and things like this, they're getting sloppy. People are getting lazy. People are doing things on their phone. <sighs> it's just sad. What the heck? With the help of Gertrude the Pid, the real-time connection between her braid and snout was uh, has seen uh, was seen visually. But this demonstration, see that time they finished it, uh, was a simple introduction to Neuralink brain chip to recruit more people for the project. Elon Musk intended to announce Gertrude's two-month implant publicly, informing the world that the chip is working, effective, and continuously undergoing developments on programs and design. Soon you'll be able to control it with an app, right? We'll be able to tell Gertrude to flip over. In a re recent demonstration, Elon Musk tweeted, uh, tested the latest from the Neuralink chip with a monkey. This time, the experiment displayed the monkey's brain reaction as it plays a table tennis video game. The live stream of the monkey's performance gained thousands of views, along with the Neuralink enthusiasts, Experts were astounded by the monkey's brain reaction to the gameplay.
The Neuralink monkey experiment was among the breathtaking achievements of the fully implantable brain machine interface, also known as BMI. With the Neuralink chip installed, the monkey was able to predict the next bounce of a virtual ball and control the tennis paddle just by looking on the screen. Dex, this is the creepiest crap ever, and Elon Musk says that this is to battle AI. Well, yeah, I mean, it's it's like a it's like a damned if you do, damned if you don't, right? Because it's like if we don't do something, how can we go? Uh, in, unless AI doesn't exist, but we know it's going to, and it's going to evolve. So, what do we do to protect ourselves from it? And are we willing to advance, you know, our own? mental capability so that we can uh, deal with the superpower that's going to come from the processing of AI. Right. And so it's, it's, it's a touchy subject. It really is like on one uh, hand, do you, do you think, yeah, you got to be able to do this. Otherwise you'll never have a fighting chance. You're just going to be enslaved to the system, to the machine. Right. Or, um, you know, you adopt this and you find a way to make sure that while AI is going to continue to evolve, and these machines are going to evolve that we'll be able to stay a step ahead of them right and of course everything that's happening right now is going so fast that i i don't think uh i don't i don't know what if one goes faster than the other and we can't catch up to it uh you know we're talking skynet we if we end up having a internet capable everything then that's literally a terminator scenario uh, and now they're making these drones, these robots, and everything militarized. I think it's scary. Uh, again, says, this is so wild, amazing, and scary, says Juicy420. Uh, James can sound, says, will they be able to implant thoughts is the real question. I, uh, I believe that we already saw a study on this, and they said they could, yes. Somebody says, ah, uh, no. I don't know if you mean an answer to that question, but no, we've seen it. They can implant that. Um, let's see here. And then Zippy Moons, thank you for being the number one supporter on DLive so far uh, with just over 3,000 uh, lemons. Thank you. I appreciate your support over there. Black Labs Manor, thank you so much. I appreciate you uh, for being number two. And then Kelly2334, thank you, thank you, and thank you. Cannot say enough. Uh, number four spot, Earth Observer. Number five, Tower Bear. Antoinette's 13, Lisa K23 after that, uh, and then Vault 111, Mutant Fat Cat. Thank, thank you guys. I really do appreciate your support. Um, and Adam, yes. uh, on the, the, the Neuralink stuff, one of the things Elon talked about with Rogan was about how we may actually stop communicating, right? That and we won't if, talk? If, yeah, like the whole notion of language would change. Like we, the way we use language to try to get information from one person to another, it's pretty slow. And if all of a sudden with Neuralink, you can, you know, give somebody directions or tell them exactly what you're thinking instantaneously, there's no reason to use words anymore. Right. Um, think about it. If you could send a, a file over to them instantly, that would be your voice. They would hear your voice. They would see you. I mean, like, this is something out of sci-fi movies. It's unbelievable. Yeah, silent communication, right? That's, well, and... It's creepy. It's a creepy thought. And there'll be a, there's going to be a time when they're going to look back and talk about those crazy people from the ancient days that spoke in these weird languages. Well, it, you know, there's some movies that are coming out, predictive programming. There's this one movie that I haven't seen yet. I don't know if it's out yet, but it shows that men... Everything they think shows up as kind of like a uh, a visual. It shows like up as a hologram or something above them. Uh, I don't know if anybody can name that movie, uh, but it shows kind of a kid talking to a, a girl, and I, I believe that there's like no women on earth or something like that, but you can see what the men are thinking, and it shows up above them. Does anybody know what the hell that is called? Uh, let's see here. Smells like musk. <laughs> uh, in the year 2025, 2525, I don't know if that's the name of it, but uh, it's it's oh, very... God help the, the teenage boys at that time, right? No, no, that was part of it. It shows like an 18-year-old guy, and he's thinking about the girl, and it shows her like an image of... She can see he's 
like fantasizing about her and you know like that they kiss or something x-rated hologram nope that's not it hey i don't know what you're into <laughs> sea quest no i don't know if that's it either what is it now i can't now and now i brain fart all right anyways a little uh we had 4500 watching on youtube a thousand on d live uh thank you so much everybody that has showed up so far what do you think of elon musk's uh Neuralink. do you will, would you get one if it improved everything about you would you get one if it made you superhuman that's the question i'm asking you put in the comments down below this is no surprise and i just it really sucks because now using your cell phone is going to be like quitting cigarettes or anything else you are gonna need to stop using it i mean it says cell phones in cancer. New UC Berkeley study suggests cell phones sharply increase tumor risk. I've known this for a while, but you know now there's more proof coming out. It says new UC Berkeley research draws a strong link between cell phone radiation and tumors, particularly in the brain. Uh, who did we lose last year, the year before? Uh, McCain. McCain had a tumor on the side that he always had his phone on. Was that correct, or or am I thinking of somebody else? No, I think I think that's who you're thinking of. So I recall that. And everybody remembered him just constantly having his phone to his ear. And somebody even had a conversation with him, like you know, you need to get Bluetooth or keep your phone away from your head. Uh, some like her, somebody in his family even said he talked about it and said, yeah, it's probably uh, not a good thing to that I talk on the phone all the time. There is radiation that goes into these phones i mean like especially we don't know with the whole next generation stuff the fifth generation koa d i hope that was not a mistake koa d thank you for the super chat did a hundred dollar super chat that is incredible uh but i if you did accidentally add something i know that i've made that mistake before make sure to let me know uh and we can fix that but if not thank you for supporting independent either way even if it was a dollar I appreciate you, Cody, and thank you. You can always write a message there. In fact, I believe the more you do, the longer message you can do. So, anyways, I, I think that that could have been used for, uh, you know, communication. Shelby Cobra, beginning to think there's validity to Rocco's Basilic. What is Rocco's Basilic? I do not know. Doc Bill, Ace Books, I'll look that up, Shelby. Thank you. Ace Books, artificial intelligence robots shut down after they start talking to each other in their own language. Oh, Ace Books. I, yeah, got it. Face. Uh, we covered that uh, about a month ago or two months ago, and that is incredibly crazy. So if you didn't hear that story, uh, in fact, you can look up that. Uh, in fact, I think you can copy and paste that, that comment that Doc Bill just did, and you can actually take that to our website and uh, put it in the search bar, and it will show you the show. We went over that in detail. They actually had their AI robots inventing their own language and they started talking to each other and and Facebook couldn't understand. Dex, is that not terrifying? Oh yeah. I mean that that's that's the that's what's going to happen in the future, right? I mean they're going to start you know if if AI is unleashed in a way that it can be self-sustaining, it's going to do things we'll never know what it's doing. Because that'll be part of its own survival uh, set is to go incognito, right? I mean, you just, I don't know why people are even going with it. You just stop. They're doing it for convenience and it's going to be the ultimate inconvenience when they, it, they take us all out. Researchers took a comprehensive look at statistical findings from 46 different studies around the globe and found that a use of a cell phone for more than 1,000 hours or about 17 minutes a day over a 10 year period increased the risk of tumors by 60%. Are you kidding? Who uses their phone 17 minutes or less? Now I am like starting to freak out. Now I'm going to get one of those uh, claw things and another claw thing with just a finger on it. And I'm going to hold, uh, I'm going to hold the phone like that. I got to get me one of them. Uh, it, absolutely insane. Uh, that, that's like, that's totally unrealistic. 
How many people use their cell phones for eight hours a day? I use my cell phone a lot. By the way, this is freaky. If you have a Google Nest in your home, you need to check your settings and you need to delete what they've been getting on you already. And uh, again, it says, Google has been recording you. Here's three ways to delete your voice history. It says, if you have a Google Home or Google Nest device in your home, it's likely the smart assistant has been recording you. Thankfully, there have been uh, there are three simple ways to delete your voice history and a way to stop the devices from recording you altogether. Consumers across the U.S. were sent into panic in 2019 when it was uncovered that both Google and Amazon give human contractors access to audio clips from their customers' home and Echo devices. As a part of our work to develop speech technology for more languages, we partner with language experts around the world who understand the nuances and accents of a, a specific language. Uh, David Monsey's product manager for Google Search explained in 2019. It says that these language uh, experts review and transcribe a small set of queries to help us better understand those languages. This is a critical part of the process of building speech technology and is necessary to create products like the Google Assistant. Again, this website actually goes down and you can uh, figure out how to actually uh, delete these. Uh, again, this actually shows you how to do it. Uh, it even gives you a website. So we're going to link this on marfuglenews.com. If you have one of these, I'm not judging you. Uh, again, I wouldn't have one, but again, uh, again, make sure to go and delete the voices. Uh, again, the information will be on this uh, this actual document here, and you can access it at marfuglenews.com. Dex, do you want to explain know, what else there is there too? Yeah, uh, re real quick. This also happens on other devices like Apple, but you know when it happened to them the first time, they came out and changed it and made sure that you opt in that if you wanted to allow your voice to be used to help improve like Siri, right? Um, in their in their example. So, you know, it, it's okay, I think, for these companies to do it so long as you're willing to give up your permission to do it. And you shouldn't be it shouldn't happen just because you didn't know, right? That's the the bad part is when it when it just is randomly recording you and sending anything that you've ever said to these, you know, language experts to see if they can decipher, you know, and improve their program or use that for any information they want, right? So kind of crazy. Now, and they say it's for that, but again, it can be, can and will be used against you later. Watch. And they've grabbed, they've already grabbed information well, and recordings from the Amazon stuff. So yeah, if they're storing it for, for, even if they're storing it just to make their product better, it doesn't, that, that doesn't make that information not accessible to a subpoena. Right. <laughs> and if they weren't storing it, you can't subpoena something that doesn't exist. Exactly. So. Um, Absolutely. I want a uh, special shout out to Prep for Life, Moody Mama, Tower Bear, Delta Dawn, Kelly2334, Nurse Betty, Redhead with Dread, Cynthia Lynn, a big, big shout out to Cynthia Lynn, N95 Hero, Occam's Razors, EOD Vet, Buster the Dog, Gone Girl, Triple Seven, 2021, Stormy Weather, uh, of course, Jimmy Shively, 17, Dixie Doe, DM Walkin, Jimmy Shively, Kishara, Lisa K23, SPSM. You guys are absolutely amazing. Thank you guys for going above and beyond over on DLive. Uh, again, everybody that is over there is just amazing. Uh, Den Dave 81 Johnson, Blue Light. You guys make this show. You are the credits. Uh, Dex, can you tell us what is over on uh, web only? Because there is some really fiery stuff there, but not on, on top of that, uh, some pretty stupid stuff there too. Everybody needs to be following me on Twitter, at Marfugel. Uh, the last... Uh, day of tweets you got to check out but dex can you tell us absolutely go to marfuglenews.com click on the thumbnail for the show scroll down past all the news that we just covered to find the web only content that's everything that we can't cover it's two-sided it may be too much uh, too hot for this tv right but there's a lot of crazy things going on there's a huge lawsuit that i think a lot of people may be wanting to jump on the backs of if this turns into a class action uh that was just announced by the former administration uh, going out against a lot of the uh, social networks. There's more information rolling out about the bean counters and what they're doing in the different states. 
um, and even some interesting things about uh, what NSA may be doing um, uh, specifically with Tucker. So go take a look at that stuff and uh, there's plenty more there. Marfuglenews.com. Click on the thumbnail, scroll down and look for web only content. Well, thank you so much, Dex, for your services today. Again, Dex has put all of the uh, stories right there on the website for you to access. Uh, thank you, everybody that went over to PayPal. A little bit of everything that uh, went over to the show. Uh, thank you so much for your support. Uh, if you do want to support the show on the right side, you can. Uh, we right now are trying to launch our community uh, every bit of help helps. So thank you so much. Special shout out to Gone Girl 777, Susan Donahue, and all of our other uh, above and beyond angels that support this show. Thank you, everybody that has stuck with us for three years. Make sure especially to thank your mods like Lisa R. R Hall, CJ Blaze, Bones, Rip Curl, uh, Chance Paladin, Jammer, Jam Miss Jammer. Thank you guys for just being there every night and uh, helping this family keep going. So, all right, Dex. It is now officially time for a shout tro. It's not an outro. It's not a shout out. It's a shout tro. It's kind of slow, but okay. A shout tro. Remember, you can go over to Marfugal Jams. If it cuts over on YouTube, it will continue there and on DLive. I see the Velma, a Helka, and a BC Belder. I bring it bigger, dying up. You never know what's going to happen.
All right, this one is for Zippy Moons. Okay, let's see. Who is the top over on DLive? It looks like it is still Zippy Moons. All right, let's make a song for Zippy Moons. Thank you for being a top contributor tonight. I appreciate you so much. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. All right. Down, down, down. I bring it you, I bring it back, I dip it through. Oh. 